Hello again, Doomtown fans. Willing Dunn here, and I'm back to talk a little bit about jobs in Doomtown Reloaded. Jobs are some of the most powerful and game-defining effects in Doomtown Reloaded, but as a new player, it can be pretty difficult to understand why this is so. In this video, we're going to look at the rules of playing with jobs, and we're also going to talk about some of the emergent interactions that form the basis of tactics involving jobs. The two biggest ways that jobs differ from normal shootouts is who can participate in the shootout and the outcome after the shootout is finished. In this example, we're going to get to discard the mark if our job is successful. This is in addition to any casualties or normal results of a shootout. But this comes at a cost. At the end of the job, we're going to have to send all of the dudes who participated in the job on our side home booted. If we're not smart about when we play our job and who participates in the job, we might end up very vulnerable because all of our dudes are home booted. The first step for playing a job is to choose the leader of that job. This can be any dude that we control in any location as long as the dude is unbooted. Take note that the guy needs to be unbooted even if the job doesn't require the dude to boot as part of the cost. The example we're using here, kidnapping, requires that the dude boot because it says noon job boot. But if we look at recruitment drive, for example, this just says noon job. This is going to mean that the leader doesn't have to boot for part of the cost, but he does have to be unbooted to be the leader of the job. One final note about the leader of a job. If the job is originating from a dude's ability, such as Judge Harry Somerset here, he has to be the leader of the job since it's his ability. Now that we've chosen the leader of our job, we're going to have to choose who the target of the job is. This is called the mark. The mark can either be a dude or it can be a location on the board. For most effects such as kidnapping, the mark is going to be the dude who suffers the nasty fate of the job. We're going to be able to use jobs like kidnapping to make dudes who would normally run away from a shootout the mark of a job and therefore unable to run away from the shootout without suffering the fate of the job's failure. Like with initiating a regular shootout, the leader of a job is going to have to form their posse first. This is going to give our opponent the information they need to gauge the strength of our posse before they have to commit people to the defense of the mark. Unlike a regular shootout, we have some special rules about who is able to join the leader's posse. Unbooted dudes who are either at or adjacent to the location of the leader can join, as well as unbooted dudes who are adjacent to the mark's location. If you have dudes who happen to already be in the mark's location, they can join regardless if they're booted or not. Take note at how this slight difference in the forming of posses allows many more dudes to be eligible to join the leader's posse than if it was just a normal shootout. Now that we've formed our posse, everybody in that posse is going to have to boot except for the leader and any dudes who are already in the location of the mark. Take note again as I mentioned earlier that since kidnapping says noon job boot, we're going to have to boot the leader as part of the cost. Now that we've formed our posse, it's up to our opponent to decide whether or not he or she wants to oppose our job. This is going to involve forming a posse to get into a shootout with our dudes. Like with opposing a regular shootout, our opponent's going to be able to choose any of his or her unbooted dudes adjacent to the location of the mark, or just any dudes that are in the location of the mark. Also, as with a normal shootout, all of our opponent's dudes who are adjacent to the location of the mark are going to have to boot to join the posse. The dudes who are already in the mark's location won't have to boot. It's also worth noting here that if the mark is a dude, you're probably going to want to have that dude join the posse since the outcome of the job is going to determine the outcome of that dude's life. So you might as well have him fight to defend himself along with the other dudes in the posse. Now that both sides have formed a posse, and the dudes who had to have booted to pay the cost of joining the posse, we're going to simultaneously move both posses to the location of the mark. From here, a normal shootout is going to occur. 
So we're going to get to take all of the steps that we would normally take with a shootout, including making shootout plays before the shootout, drawing our hands like normal, making resolution plays after the shootout, suffering casualties, and then choosing whether to run or gun. If that didn't end the combat, we're going to keep doing more rounds like we normally would with a shootout until there's only one posse left. If our posse is the only one that remains, the job is going to be considered to be successful, and then anything that follows the if successful part of the job will occur. In this case, we're going to be able to discard the mark. It's perhaps also worth noting that somebody in your posse, not necessarily a leader, needs to still be at the mark's location for the job to be successful. This is just like with a normal shootout, where if Pistol Whip or something like that makes all of your posse leave the shootout, the shootout immediately ends and is unsuccessful in terms of the job. Before we carried out whatever if successful effects may have occurred with the job, everyone who is part of the leader's posse must go home booted. It's worth noting that this is also the case even if the job fails for whatever reason. Finally, after we've done all of this, we're going to resolve whatever the job card says. In this case, the mark gets discarded. Before I go, I would like to answer a couple quick, frequently asked questions I've seen regarding jobs. We're going to look at two really brief examples for these. The first example shows how there are situations in which our opponent may not be able to oppose our job. For example, if we play establishing who's in charge and we mark one of our in-town deeds, if our opponent doesn't have anyone adjacent to that in-town deed, such as if everybody's on their side of the street, there's no way that they're going to be able to oppose our job since there's no one that they have adjacent to the mark. This is going to mean that our job is going to succeed automatically. Another quick example is going to show how we might be able to use other jobs to get some of our dudes out of vulnerable situations. In this situation, we've used Ali Hensman's ability to gain a control point, but we're worried that she's going to get attacked by Lane Healy once he moves in town with his Mustang. For this reason, it might make sense for us to play our recruitment drive. We're going to mark the town square, and since Lane is out of town, he isn't adjacent to the town square, making him uneligible to oppose our job. This is going to let us complete the job and hopefully send Allie home booted along with all of the other dudes in our posse. Well, that's going to do it for my jobs overview. I hope that this helped to clarify some of the rules issues that you might have been having with jobs. They're certainly pretty confusing when you play them for the first few times, but I think once you get a handle on what they're capable of, they become an instrumental part of the gameplay. I really think that jobs are the most important cards in Doomtown and really give the aggressive decks a way to leverage the passive play of the control-oriented decks. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, please press subscribe and the button that looks like a thumbs up. And I'll see you again for some more Doomtown stuff.